Shalom, all praise to Yahweh Bashim Shah, double honor to the Apostles of GMS. My name is Aminawa Allah, coming at you with another lesson. This lesson is about prayer. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do, what um, I'm going to title this lesson. The will and the Spirit come to me, and I'll come up with a title, but I'm just going to get right to it. It says, James chapter 5, verse 16 Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let's go to that word, the effectual. And it said, confess your faults. You know, if a brother offends one, offends another brother, you know, you, you know, you confess your fault to that brother. You know, you apologize. You know, just offending that brother. You know, this, what, what I've read thus far is self-explanatory. Other than the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So everything is really self-explanatory. So I'm not going to delve too, delve too much into that. Due to the due to the uh, process process of time, so let's go to the word here. Effectual, the effectual fervent. Strong's G seventeen fifty four. Energeo, energeo, energeo. To be operative, be at work, put forth power, to work for one, aid one, to affect, to display one's activity. To show oneself operative. So the effectual fervent prayer is talking about an operative prayer. A prayer that puts forth power. A prayer that aids you. Okay? Active. See? Mighty. Okay? Let me go back. I think I saw something a little more there. Let's see. Uh, uh, James 5.16 does not have... The force of an adjective, but gives the reason why a righteous man has outward success due to the fact that it exhibits its activity, its works. See, it's solemn, it's solemn and earnest. So that's showing diligence right there. So the effectual fervent prayer does what? It's operative, it's full of power, it aids you. The effectual fervent prayer, okay? Okay, right here, this is the word effectual. This is um, the King James Dictionary definition, effectual. It says, effectual, proven in effect, or the effect desired or intended, or having adequate power or force to produce the effect. So the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, or the effectual, or the, um, the effectual fervent prayer, or a prayer having adequate power or, or force to produce the effect. What's the effect? The effect is um, asking, the effect is, um, is a, uh, Causing the prayer that you're asking the Heavenly Father to be answered. That's the effect. Okay? Or having adequate power or force to produce the effect. So that effectual prayer, or that prayer that's producing the effect, that intended effect, which is for the Heavenly Father to answer your prayer. The uh, the means employed were effectual. It says, um... Uh... That's basically the point on that. Okay? It means producing an effect or the effect desired or intended or having adequate power or force to produce the effect. Okay? So you're praying to the Heavenly Father, hoping that the Heavenly Father, um, so that the effect of that prayer will be the Father answering it. Okay? And it says effectual fervent. I just want to give it other definition to it as well, even though you already went to the Greek and the blue letter. Fervent. Having or displaying passion, a passionate intensity. So the effectual fervent prayer or the passionate or the intense prayer or the prayer that you want to that you um want the heavenly father to answer you ask it passionately you ask it intensely okay of a righteous man see confess your faults one to another and pray one for another this is James 5 and 16 that you may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much let's go to that word availeth Strong's G twenty four eighty, Ishuo, 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 to be strong, to be strong in body, to be robust, to be in sound health, to have power, to have power shown by extraordinary deeds, to exert willpower, power, to have strength to overcome, to be a force, a veil, to be serviceable, to be able, can. So that's the point that we got there. Okay, a veil. Look at that word, a veil. I believe the word a veil means like. To gain or like the profit. I think we, I think I probably we just read the definition. 
<laughs> avail, use or take advantage of an opportunity or available or available resource, help or benefit. Okay, so the effectual prayer of a righteous man, of the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So that passionate, intense prayer that that righteous man is asking, that he's putting forth in power, it availeth much. Okay? It's to much benefit. Because remember the word effectual means like to be mighty, to put forth power. So that effectual fervent prayer, that prayer that you put forth in power, and you're asking it in a fervent manner, in a passionate, intense manner, of a righteous man, it availeth much. It, in other words, it gives, it, it brings forth great benefit, because the Heavenly Father will answer that prayer. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29, that's how you always got to pray. Prayer is very important, okay? Because if you're not praying, it's like you don't got no, you don't believe. So like you think that um, these things are just, the things that you need the Heavenly Father to do, just happen just to happen. What happened because you just wanted to happen. You know, not praying to the Heavenly Father is like showing pride, man. It's like you feel that you're worthy enough. It's like it's like you feel that that uh, you actually have the capability to be able to guide your own path. Like you don't have to ask the Heavenly Father. So prayer is very important. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. It says, The Lord, which his name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. That's self-explanatory. James 4. And one, now check this out. For whence came wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? So the wars and fighting among you come from the lust that war within your members, man. Those lusts are talking about them sensual pleasures, those pleasures of the senses. Taste, touch, smell, sight, hearing. Okay? That's those sensual pleasures. Those things that are the opposite of the spirit, but are of the earth. Okay? Because something that's sensual is something that's uh, pleasures to the senses. All right, it's opposite than the spirit of the heavenly fathers. It's physical pleasures or carnal pleasures, as opposed to, um, as opposed to the spirit of the heavenly father. That's what being carnal is. Carnal is, um, is like the desires of a man in regards to his flesh, as opposed to the to the spiritual the spiritual desires of the heavenly father. That's what being carnal really is. Okay, it's about the pleasing of the flesh, the pleasing of your earthly pleasures. Okay. So for once come wars and fightings among you, come they not hence, even of the lust that war within your members? In other words, do not they come from that those carnal desires that you have, meaning those earthly de desires that you have, those fleshly desires that you have, those desires that you have that are not of the spirit, that are not beneficial to the spirit? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask, ye, because you ask not. You, you you want you, you desire a certain thing that you desire, but you ask not. But it says you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. Let's go to that word amiss. See what that word amiss means. See what that says. Strong's G twenty five sixty. Kakos. 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 Miserable to be ill improperly, wrongly, to speak ill of, revile, one. So you ask amiss, okay? You ask amiss, meaning you ask improperly. You ask wrongly. So it says, you ask and receive not, because you ask amiss. You ask wrongly, that you may consume it upon your lust. So the thing that they ask for, they ask it to consume upon their lust. You know, I want more money. You want more money to do what? Not because you want to put forth that money... To um, push the truth, to push the wisdom, knowledge, and its understanding of the Most High and the Son, Yahweh Bashim Shah, but you want more money to heap it upon your lust, to heap, to heap it upon your carnal desires, your fleshy desires, those mortal desires, not the desires of the spirit. You know, I want new sneakers. Lord, please let me get that chain. You know, you're asking things to heap it upon your lust, man. So it says, ye ask, but ye ask amiss. I mean, you ask wrongly, you ask improperly. Because let's go to Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. And all things whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believe, and ye shall receive. This is Yahweh Shah speaking. So all things ye ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Because you got to believe. Okay, you got to have faith. That what did you ask for the Heavenly Father will grant that. Let me get a quick precept real quick. Proverbs 11 and 1. Now faith 
is the substance is the this is the definition of faith right here. Anybody ask you what is faith mean? Jump to Hebrews eleven and one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. So you obtain a good report by faith. The elders are those that came before you. Not only our our elders, but it's mentioned these those elders mentioning them here in this chapter. It mentions Abel, mentions Enoch, Noah, Abraham, and so forth. So now by faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the substance of what you hope for, that's faith. The evidence of things not seen is faith because you got to believe it. You're asking, yet it hasn't come yet. But you're asking in belief. You're asking in faith. Okay, which faith is the substance is the substance of things hoped for. You're hoping that what it is that you're asking for will come to fruition. The evidence of things not seen. So faith shows the evidence of things not seen. Faith shows the evidence of things not seen. Meaning when you pray to the Heavenly Father, though you're asking for something, yet you have not seen it, you have in faith that it will actually come to pass, that it will actually be manifested so that you can see it. Okay? So that it can actually be brought forth. That's why I see so that you can see it. Because something that's manifest is made plain. It's made open. Okay? Let's go to that word manifest real quick. Clear or obvious to the eye or mind. Display or show a quality or feeling by one's acts or appearance. Demonstrate. So when you ask in the faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when you pray to the Heavenly Father, when you ask and believe, like we read in Matthew chapter 20, um, 1 verse 22, and all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe me, shall receive. When you believe in, that's having faith, which is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You're asking in faith. Hoping that what it is you're asking for, the Heavenly Father will cause it to manifest. Meaning it will, it will cause it to be, what? Clear or obvious to the eye or mind. Alright? Meaning that the Most High will bring it to pass. So you got to have faith that though you don't see it, the Heavenly Father will make it manifest. Uh, Sirach chapter 35 verse uh, 17. Now check this out. The scripture says, Sirach 35 verse 17. The prayer of the humble pierces the clouds. Until it come high, until it until it come nigh, meaning near, he will not be comforted and will not depart to the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. So it says the prayer of the, of the humble pierces the cloud, meaning when you when you pray to the Heavenly Father, it pierces the cloud. In other words, your prayer goes up to the Heavenly Father. And until it come nigh, meaning until it comes near to the Father, until it comes to the Father, he will not be comforted. Meaning when this person is when this humble person or righteous person is praying, until he feel that prayer, until that prayer reaches the Most High. He's not going to be confident, meaning what? He's going to keep on praying until the Heavenly Father causes that prayer to come to pass. And then he'll feel comfort. But until he feels that comfort, he's going to keep praying. And will not depart. He's not going to depart. He's not going to stop praying. To the Most High shall behold the judge righteously and execute judgment. Until the Most High answers his prayers and judges righteously and executes his judgments. So that goes back to what we read here in the book of James 5 and 16. When it says what? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The word fervent means what? Intensely or passionately. Affectual means like to have power or to produce a desired effect. The effect is what? The Heavenly Father answering the prayer. That effect is the Heavenly Father answering that prayer. Or the Heavenly Father beholding to judge righteously and execute his judgment. Because why? You're not going to be comforted and you're not going to depart until what? Your prayer comes nigh. So you're not going to stop praying until your prayer comes to the Heavenly Father. You're effectually and fervently praying to the Heavenly Father. And it availed much. It's of much benefit. Because the Most High will answer your prayer. But some prayers don't, people, some people's prayers don't get answered. Because what does this say? Uh, well, that's in the next scripture. I'm going to go to right now. Lamentation 3 verse 44. Thou hast covered thyself with the cloud that our prayer shall, shall pass not through. Because going back into slavery, what happened was what? We go back into the slavery, our people prayed that have been fought, but for one, we didn't even have a name. So that's one reason why our prayer wasn't being answered. You got people praying to the Heavenly Father, to the Heavenly Father and the Son today, but guess what? We're praying, to the, praying to the Heavenly Father in the name of the Son today, but guess what? Their prayer is not being answered because they ain't saying anything. They're saying his name is Jesus. The name of the Most High is Yahweh, and the name of the Son is Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Bahashem means in the name Yahweh Shah. That's his son. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, meaning Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shah. Because it is not written 
that there's one mediator between God and man, and that's the Son, Yahweh Shah. So you got to pray to the Father in the name of the Son. So the scripture has said, What? That has covered that stuff with the cloud that our prayer should not pass through. So the Most High has like covered itself with a cloud. In other words, that our prayer should not pass through. In other words, the Most High has basically like put a force field around himself, so to speak. That when you pray to the Heavenly, that when certain people pray to the Heavenly Father, your prayer can't pass through. But if you ask humbly, that prayer to humble go pierce the clouds. It's going to go through them clouds. In other words, the Most High will allow your, pay, your, your prayer to pass through. He'll answer it. See that? Check that out. Sirach 21 and 5, it says, A prayer out of a poor man's mouth reaches to the ears of the Most High, and the judgment comes speedily. So what? The prayer of the humble pisses the clouds. See that? A prayer out of a poor man's mouth reaches the ears of the Most High, because it's piercing the clouds. Thou hast covered us over the cloud that our, prayer should not, that our prayer should not pass through. So, a prayer of a poor man's mouth reaches the ears of the Most High, because it passes through that cloud that the Most High has covered himself with. It passes through that cloud, pits through that cloud, and then it comes nigh to the Father. See that? It comes to the ears of the Father. So the Most High, let's, let's recap that real quick. He covered himself with a cloud that, your prayer, that our prayers should not pass through. So the Most High got a force foot around himself so that certain prayers can't go through. Right? But a poor man's um, but the prayer out of a poor man's mouth reaches the ears of, out of a poor man's mouth reaches the ears of the Most High. Why is that? Because it's piercing them clouds, man. It's piercing them clouds because he's asking in humility. Not only that, soon in the book of Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, he's believing in all in all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believe ye shall receive. So you gotta believe, whether it's faith, more wisdom, not understanding, whatever it is, whatever infirmities you're dealing with, you pray into the most high that the most high um that the most high will answer your prayers. You ask you pray into the most high that the most high will do these things, and you possessing that faith. And believe that the Most High is going gonna to answer them prayers, man. All right? 1 John 3 and 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his, in his sight. So part of the Most High. So, so part of um, uh, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Part of those things being received that you ask for, you got to keep the, you got to do what the Most High say do. You think that you're going to be eating pork and the Most High is going to answer your prayers? You think it'll be a homosexual? Think the most I dealing with homosexuals, man? You out your damn mind. You think you're gonna be willingly you think you're gonna be going around defiling the Sabbath, you're gonna be committing adultery, and most high is gonna answer your prayers, man? You're gonna be shaving your face hair off. Because according to the scriptures, you're not supposed to shave. You think you'll be going to breaking the Lord's statutes and commitments to the most high and not possessing faith and the most high gonna answer your prayer? It don't work that way, man. You gotta do the things that's pleasing in his sight. And keep reading, verse 23. And this is his commandment. That's this is the commandment right here. That we should believe on the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And that he keepeth his commandments, and he that keepeth his commandments dwell in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. So whatsoever you ask, you receive him because you keep his commandments and do the things pleasing in his sight. And his commandment that you believe on his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay? And you can speak about, in the book of James, you got to have works and faith. It speaks about that in the book of James. James only five chapters long. You, you brothers can read that. It speaks about having works and faith. Okay? So you got to have both. Okay? you got to have both. It's a combination of the two. Like, you can't just believe in the Lord and then just do whatever the hell you want. It don't work that way. It does not work that way, man. All right? And that's in the book of James. I'm looking at my Bible right now. Yeah, that's in, book, that's in the book of James, the second chapter, man. Okay, so you got to believe in Yahweh Shah and do as Yahweh Shah had told us to do. Let's get John 4 and 13, 14 and 13. It says, um, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if he asks anything in my name, I will do it. So he's supposed to ask in the Most High, in Yahweh Shah's name. And his name is Yahweh Shah, who the one in the world called Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shah meaning what? He is the deliverer. Psalm chapter 141, verse 7 1. A psalm of David. Yahweh Yahweh Shah cry unto thee. Make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. So your prayer is set forth before the Most High as incense, like a sweet smelling savor to the Lord, to the Most High. 
and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. So when you're praying to the Most High and lifting up your hands to the Most High, you're praying, it's like an evening sacrifice. It's like a sweet, savoring smell of an evening sacrifice or like an incense going to the Heavenly Father. Okay? In Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, and when he had taken the book, the four beasts and, and four and twenty elders, this is talking about uh, Yahweh Shah, seven, verse 6, and I beheld him low in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. So John saw in the vision a lamb that was slain, that was slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes. Them horns represent what? Power. Those eyes represent, he sees everything. Okay? Because seven represents completion. So having seven horns meaning complete power, seven eyes, complete sight, which are the seven spirits of the Most High sent forth into all the earth. Seven represents completion. Okay? And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, talking about the Mosai. Yahweh Shah came with the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, talking about the Mosai. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. So the prayers of the saints are like golden vials of odors. Golden vials of what odors? Odors like, like incense or like an evening sacrifice, because your prayer is set before the Mosai as an incense. And lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. So lifting up your hands is like a sweet savoring smell of an evening sacrifice to the Heavenly Father, and your prayer is like a sweet smelling incense. It's like a sweet smelling incense and like an evening, uh, like a savoring smell of evening sacrifice inside of vials, inside of a, of a vial, okay? Like a like a um, oh yeah, a, a vial. Like you ever seen a pill, the, a vial of a pill, so to speak, or like a bottle? A bottle could be a vial too. All right. So it's like our prayers are like in bottles, and you open up a bottle, and you smell that sweet, and you smell that sweet oil, you know, that sweet fragrance. That's what our prayers are like to the heavenly Father, okay? Like a sweet smelling incense, or like a sweet savory smell of an evening sacrifice, okay? So the Most High desires your prayers, like the Most High desires a, a, a sacrifice. Isn't that written when you go back into the Book of Genesis, the fourth chapter? How he had respect unto Abel's sacrifice, and Abel's sacrifice, the first things of his flock. And the Most High, that means the Most High smelt that smell of Abel's sacrifice, and he had respect unto it. So the Most High is going to smell up our prayer like an evening sacrifice and have respect unto it as well. And let me give you one scripture real quick. First Timothy 3 and 5, and I'm going to close it on this. Okay, second Timothy three and five. Excuse me. Man, oh man, he would not happen. Got the scripture in my mind. I know it was one of them chapters. No, it's two and five. First Timothy two and five. That's, that's where it is. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God, well, one power, and one media between the Most High and men. The man, Yahweh Shah. So Yahweh Shah is that mediator. So you got to go through Yahweh Shah to get to the Father. So you got to know his name, and his name is Yahweh Shah. That's one of the world called Jesus Christ, and his Father's name is Yahweh. So with that, I'm going to close. I'm going to say, all praise to Yahweh Shah. I hope you've learned something, Shalom.